We need to be a society that comes together for every person in the community that's going through hell. And in order to do that, every person that's going through hell, whatever hell, has to be honest about their pain. Today I'm here with my mum and we are going to be talking about the controversy that is Logan Paul. I think it was great that he created an awareness about that forest. I did not know that there was a forest in Japan called Suicide Forest and that it was such an issue and that so many people went there to die. Because I was horrified watching Logan Paul's vlogs and I saw kids running around there and the guy saying, don't venture off the path, you're not allowed to venture off the path. It's become a bit of a tourist attraction if you like, but there is this suicide forest in Japan. I think they need to monitor that a little bit more. When I found out that one in six high school kids seriously think about suicide, that's, that's stunning. Yeah, this is such a common problem. When I was about 11 or 12, my brother, who is a lot older than me, 15 years older, had some friends that lived opposite him and their son hung himself. He committed suicide. It didn't really impact me. All I can remember is, oh, that kid there, he used to live there, and I was told that he died, that he hung himself. I was 11 or 12 and I went on with my life, like, you know, I got on with my life without it really disturbing me too much. However, I can remember it really impacting my brother, really impacting the family of, of the boy. But even the friendship between my brother and that family separated because of the huge grief that went on with that family. No longer were their children playing in the cul-de-sac. It was quiet. The sister of the boy, she would sit in her room all day. She was devastated, of course, as you would be, and so were the parents. The impact that it had on that family is what I remember more. I think Logan Paul creating an awareness of how extreme suicide is, is a good thing. He needed to use his status to create an awareness on how bad suicide is. And um, I'm really glad that he's doing that and he's going to donate some money towards it. Because I think it is like that. I think it is exactly how that person in that video said. If you haven't seen his you know, commentary, go and have a look at his latest video. That this man, he, he jumped off that bridge. And the minute he jumped, he thought, I don't want to do this anymore. I became concerned about the suicide and I went looking on YouTube. And it was then that I learned about the young girl that hung herself on Instagram live last year. It was appalling what that girl had to go through and it was so bad that she eventually hung herself live. And no one, no one came to her aid, they just watched her. For every one person that dies by suicide, there's 287 other people that think seriously about it but don't. Those are stories, again, that have not been told. If we told those stories of people who got through it as opposed to one who didn't, imagine what kind of influence that would have on people's behavior. I'm allergic to perfume, petrol, deodorant, washing powders, um, incenses, names and things, plastics, synthetic clothing, um, and the list goes on, but mainly perfumes and pesticides. Which and is something powders. you can't really avoid. It's hard to avoid that. And to be honest, there's been a few times where I've thought life isn't worth living. And it's not just me and mum who have it. My two older sisters have it and obviously it may pass down to my nephews as well. I, have, I know people that have to live their days in, in a bathtub because they can't handle any form of chemical. I know people that live in little sheds that are covered in aluminium and Gorilla Tape uh, because they can't handle a minute amount of fumes that come into their house. You can't change the past. You can't. But I can hopefully try my hardest to improve the future for you. Italy's had a bad couple of years. Just felt very empty inside and very sad inside and certain things have happened this year where she's asked someone to take care of her and her health and they've done the exact opposite and harmed her and watched her. Kids these days are really cruel. Yeah. Pretty mean, there's a lot of bullying that goes on. 
Enderley's been bullied at school. Everywhere that Enderley has tried to fit in in the last two years, they've had something to say about it. I'm so glad that she has YouTube to fit in. You can be whatever you want to be. If you want to make like, I don't know, giant Tim Tams for a living, you can do that. If you, I don't know, if you have rainbow hair, if you, whatever country you come from, if you come from Antarctica, like people, whatever you are, you can fit in and people will to appreciate the YouTube community. You. Yeah, yeah, to the YouTube community. Be engulfed in, in the YouTube community. You'll love her and take care of her when I'm not around or when I can't be here and that she'll find friends on here and support her and I hope that she can support other people too that may be feeling quite lonely. Even if you even if you don't have real friends, which I don't, but like you can make internet friends, anyone, even if they're ten years older than you. Mentally often watches um, some YouTubers who play games and she feels like there's someone there with her. There's someone there yeah. and they're talking and she can hear them. And she feels like she has company. There's always something on YouTube, whether you watch a music clip um, or, or a vlog, a vlog, or someone baking chocolate chip muffins. Oh, or... yum! <laughs> the smell. Smell can make you. It can even put you in a happy mood. So if you watch a vlog on chocolate chip cookies, and then imagine the smell. Or like crackling fire. Yeah. Oh, so good. There's always something on YouTube that will uplift your spirits. There are other people on the internet like her. There are other kids that are depressed. I also saw a video of a six-year-old girl, or maybe she was seven or eight at the most, who uploaded a live stream today that was entitled, I'm Depressed. Really? Kids are younger and younger and younger and yeah, depressed. I mean, mean, yeah, I know that people are like, oh, you have such a great life, you know, you look like such a fun person, but, you know, behind the scenes, life is really hard for me. But, you know, you just got to keep pushing forward. And We know what it feels like to be depressed, to be lonely, to be in a dark place. Well, I'm pledging to donate $1 million to various suicide prevention organizations with the first $250,000 going immediately to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline so they can increase their capacity to help those in need. What has happened as a result from that video and subsequent videos is amazing. It is, it really is. A million dollars towards suicide awareness. That's and he will keep continuing to do that, creating an awareness for these young kids to stop them going into that dark place. Um, so I hope you guys were benefited by that video. I hope you learned something. Did you um, learn something? I learned something. I didn't know the stuff that mum, some of the stuff that mum talked about today. I hope it's helped someone. As I said, I'm going to leave in the description box below if you are feeling any of these emotions. Just, you know, there'll be some hotlines and websites and donation links if you want yeah, to. If you want to donate some money towards you know, helping create an awareness of the people that commit suicide here in Australia. Or to, to just call someone or read up about it or, you know, there'll be links in the description box below if you have any helpful websites from Australia then. Well, thanks for watching everyone. Um, I'll see you hopefully next time for a normal video. Yeah. Bye.